Welcome to this video. The topic of this video is continuity. We've been studying limits and one of the applications of limits is continuity. So what is a continuous function? Let's look at that in this video. Here is a short outline. We will be looking first at an informal definition of continuity, so you have more or less an understanding of what a continuous function is. And then we'll study the property a little bit more, and especially we look at which functions, you already know, that are continuous. And limits and continuous functions have a, a close relation to each other, so we also have a look at that. First of all, an informal definition. So what is a continuous function? Say that we have a vertical axis, horizontal axis, x, y. Then as it says here, a, a function is continuous on an interval. So in general, uh, we can consider an interval, say, from a to b. If you can draw the function without lifting your pen from the paper. So I'm going to start here at one end of the interval and then it can have all kinds of shapes. And then if you then you have y is f of x. Um, and this is a, a continuous function. Now, to understand better what can go wrong, so when is a function not continuous, let's look at a couple of examples. So first, a continuous function. It's smooth. You can draw it without lifting your pen from the paper. What can go wrong is that there is a gap. So here you see that we have basically a left part and a right part, and at some point, the function makes a jump. And apparently here, the function value at this difficult point itself uh, belongs to the left branch and here on the right is an open circle so the value is not this here um, so that's something that can occur another thing that we have seen before is that there can be a gap somewhere in in your function so um, previously when we were studying limits we had the function f of x equals x squared minus 2 over x minus 2 and we had seen that this is basically a straight line, but x equals 2, there the function is not defined. So the domain of this function has, has a gap in there. You cannot evaluate it for x equals 2, because then you have division by 0. So that is something that could happen, and here you see a more general plot of a function where there is indeed a gap there. And then finally, what could also happen is that you have asymptotes. So here... And for instance, examples that you know of this are also the tangent function and, and 1 over x, and this could be minus 1 over x or something like that. Um, but the function is not defined for x equals 0 and has a vertical asymptote there. So that's also not continuous. Now, let's look at a more formal definition. So let us consider a function f that is defined on a certain interval bc. So if I plot some axes... We have x, y, we have an interval from b to c, and then we have some function y is f of x. Then we pick a point in the interval. So let's say that we are here at the point a that is in the interval b, c. Then what the definition says is that f is continuous at x equals a if the limit of x going to a fx equals fa. So this is a really mathematical definition. And at first glance, it doesn't have anything to do with the informal definition of lifting your pen from the paper. So what happens here is that you look locally. And basically what we say is, well, this here means that the limit should exist. So whether we go to a from the left or from the right, both of these limits should exist, so I can approach this point from the left and from the right. And they should also be equal, and they should equal f of a. So, again, if, if you want to see what, what could go wrong here, what could also go wrong, so if I have a different function, I could have something like this, where I have an open circle and then a jump, and then it is not continuous. So... This is the function value. I could also have the situation. Oops, let's jump here to the right, to the left. Um, I could also have the situation that you have a gap, 
and that you define the function value to be something else. So then both the left limit and the right limit, they exist, but they're not equal to the function value. So those are things that can go wrong, that, that are functions that are not continuous at a point. So what the definition tells us is three things. F of A must be defined because we write F of A here. So A has to be in the domain of the function. The limit must exist. So in particular, the left and the right limit, whether you approach like this to A or like this to A, you should find the same thing. And then finally, the limit and F A must be the same. So that is the formal definition of continuity. And then I started by saying you have a function defined on an interval on the previous slide. So what does it mean for an interval? Its function is continuous on an interval if it is continuous for all points in that interval. So you pick a certain interval, you pick any point in that interval, and the function has to be continuous there. Let's look at some examples. First, let's look at a typical problem that you may get in the book or in the online system, which is say that we have a function that is given by two different formula depending on the interval where you are. So example, so consider f of x given by the formula x squared minus c squared for x less than 4 and by cx plus 20 for x bigger equal 4. So what you see is that we have um, on the left a parabola. So if I, if I make a, a rough sketch, of course, we don't know the value of c, that, that, that we are being asked to find c such that the function is continuous. Sorry, I should have told you that. So that's the question find c such that f is continuous continuous for all x in the real numbers now if you look what we have here for x values to the left of 4 so apparently 4 is a special value in this problem this function is a parabola, x squared minus c squared. We don't know what c is, but in general, um, we will have something that looks like, uh, like this. So let's plot something. Oh, I would like to do that in a different color. Let's do that in red. So I have something like this maybe. So this is y equals x squared minus c squared for some value of c. So I'm not being very specific here. Um, then for x bigger equal 4, this is a straight line, cx plus 20. So if I just plot something, I don't know what c is again, so I have to plot something. Um, so let's say that we have something like this, y equals cx plus 20. Now, as I said, these two graphs, they still depend on C. What you do know is here to the left of 4, the function is perfectly continuous because it's a parabola. Also to the right of 4, the function is continuous because it's a straight line. So the difficulty is, can we choose C in such a way that they connect? So basically by varying C, you can change these values. And what I would like to do is to find a c value such that I can simply connect them like this. So what that means is that you should find c such that x squared minus c squared equals cx plus 20 at x equals 4. So that is the basic question. So that's not too difficult to write it a little bit more mathematically and, and, and talking about continuity, what we have to require. So for continuity, for continuity, 
at x equals 4, we need. So this is what that condition comes from. We need that if you go to 4 from below, that should be the same as if you go to 4 from above. And that should equal f4. And to find this value, we have to look here at the formula. So to which case does x equals 4 belong? And then you see that it's the bottom case because there is a bigger equal sign here. So that last bit apparently is 4c plus 20. Then the limit of x coming from below there we need this formula for fx because we are going to take x values close to 4 but less than 4 and if it's less than 4 we need this part of the graph so we get the limit x is going to 4 and then we have x squared minus c squared in the middle we have the limit x is going to 4 from above so the x values are slightly above 4 so we need cx plus 20 equals this and you immediately see that this holds true because to compute the limit i can simply substitute x equals 4 nothing special is going on here so let's go to a new slide and then what we find so the first limit this one we can also simply plug in x equals 4 and we find 16 minus c squared. So what we get is the equation 16 minus c squared equals 4c plus 20. And if we pick c like that, then the two graphs are the parabola and, and the straight line, they connect at that point. So if I move all to one side we have c squared plus 4c uh, plus 4 equals 0 so c plus 2 squared equals 0 so c equals minus 2 so apparently for c equals minus 2 the two graphs connect and the function is continuous so you will see more of these questions um, and now you know how to do them. So just make sure that they connect at, at, at the crit critical point, the point where, um, where basically you have two different descriptions. They connect at x equals 4. So check whether they indeed uh, match up there. Let's do one more example for continuity on a new slide. So the second example that I wanted to show you is the function that we have encountered that one before, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, the function is not defined. for x equals 2. That's simply not in the domain. So the domain of f is every real number except 2, because in 2 we would have division by 0. So conclusion is f is not continuous, continuous at x equals 2. The function needs to be defined in 2 for it to be continuous. Every other x value, it's fine. So there is no problem there. So f is continuous. Continuous for all x unequal 2. And we have seen before that if you plot this thing, x-axis, y-axis, um, it looks approximately like this. So um, y is f-x, but then there is a gap 
say here. So at x equals 2, and you would expect the function value to be 4 there, but since 2 is not in the domain, the function has a gap there. Now, what you could imagine, and that is new, is that you say, well, this function is not defined there, but let's define a new function, say g, from the real numbers to the real numbers, by gx equals fx, as long as x is unequal to 2, and f is defined there, continuous, has all kinds of nice properties. And we have seen that if you take the limit of x going to 2 from fx, that it would give 4. So I'm going to make it 4 for x equals 2. So what you then get is a function, g. Well, f is continuous um, for all x unequal to 2, so g is also continuous, it, it, it inherits by this definition um, that property. And in addition, if we define it to be 4 at x equals 2, it will also be continuous there. So this g function is continuous everywhere, and if you would draw the graph of y equals f of x, you would simply have the straight line like this without the gap at x equals 2. So this type of discontinuity, f is discontinuous at one point, but you can remove that discontinuity, you can repair it. And this is called a removable discontinuity. Um, you cannot always manage to do that. You can imagine if you have a function with a gap there, you cannot fix it. But if you have a hole like here, then you can fix it. So sometimes you can from a function with a discontinuity, you can build a new one that is continuous. It doesn't always work. If you can do it, it's called a removable discontinuity. And so that happens if the limit of the function exists. So here, there is a, a gap in the function, but you see that this limit you can compute, this limit you can compute. So you can define this is a generalization of what I did on the previous slide. You can define a new function, and at the difficult point, you just give it the function value of uh, the limit. And then the new function, g, is continuous everywhere. Now, you may wonder at this point, which functions are continuous? So you, you have introduced this property of continuity, do we know any continuous functions? And of course, you, you know many of them. So we have already seen, I used that um, without stating it so obviously, but that a parabola and a straight line are continuous. And you can even generalize that to all polynomials are continuous. And also we have seen the sine and cosine function. Also the exponential function, they're all continuous. Logarithm is continuous as long as you take x bigger than zero, so the domain of the logarithm. Um, the square root function with n odd is continuous for every number. And if you have n even, like the normal square root function, so this is the nth root, and this is also the nth root, but if n is even, then you need to require that x is positive. You can combine continuous function to get something that is, again, continuous. So if you have f plus g, f minus g, f times g, f over g, they're all continuous when f and g are continuous, and for the latter, of course, you, you need to exclude division by zero. So you can combine continuous functions. Um, and one more property that functions have, continuous functions have, is that, um, so it, it, it is kind of complicated here. So what it says is if you have a function gx and the limit of x going to a of gx is l, and if f is continuous, then you can basically swap taking the limit and taking the function. So then the limit of fgx is the same as when you move the limit inside of the function. And this, this may look complicated, but it's something that you're going to be using all the time. And this is kind of a justification of why you can do that. So 
um, let's look at an example. So basically what it says is that if you have the limit of x is going to 1 of cosine x squared minus x, the cosine function is continuous. So I can simply say this is the cosine of the limit x squared minus x. Then I can take the limit, which is of course 0, and cosine 0 equals 1. So you will be using that all the time, but this tells you that you can do so. If you have a continuous function, you can swap that around. So you can move the limit inside the function. So it may look a little bit difficult, but in words, you can swap taking the function and taking the limit as long as you have a continuous function. So this cosine function is continuous, which is why I can move the limit inside the brackets of the cosine. That wraps it up for this video. So what have we seen? We have defined continuity and what a continuous function is. We have seen how you can combine continuous function to get new continuous function. You can add them, multiply them and so on. And we have seen that for continuous functions, you can move taking the limit inside the function argument. That wraps it up for this video and I'll see you in the next one.